Welcome to Go Alert Yourself, a bi-weekly podcast about streaming on the internet. I am Cherry Cake. I am Crunky. We aim to bring you regular interviews with your favorite streamers to find out more on the person behind the screen. To give you a more inside look on how they got started, what their goals are, and what keeps them coming back to stream. Today we're speaking with Levi Hurst, a variety streamer who plays Nuzlocke, Pokemon, and other Steam games. Welcome to the show, Levi. How are you today? I'm doing good, Conky. How how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Uh, Could you explain to me what a Nuzlocke is? Because I'm old and I don't Pokemon. Okay, so with the Pokemans, you um, a Nuzlocke is a special hard mode if you want a new challenge for your Pokemon game. Basically, you start the game as normal. You get your starter as normal, but um, here's the catch: you, if any of your Pokemon faints during your travels. You have to release them or put them in a PC and never use them again, which is what I do. So it's like a permadeath kind of deal? Yes. It makes the game a lot more emotional than it should be. <laughs> and also, of, another thing. dog fighting simulator that it is? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Just I mean, it was like that normally, but this is, adds <laughs> another layer of death. But um, also, another rule is that you have to only catch one Pokemon per route, so you can't just catch as many as you want. Is that Man. one Pokemon of this of, of one kind, or just one Pokemon in the whole? In like, there's one area? Pokemon in the entire the entire route of that. Let's say there's oh, like wow. grass in that route. Like you can only get Pokemon from anywhere in that route. It doesn't really matter. So you have to uh, pick wisely then. Well, pick wisely. You don't really get a choice. It's your first encounter. Oh, is it? all right. I see. Yeah, so you just have to hope that you get something good and not something like a so like a magic carp or something, which usually happens. I don't think magic cat gets a lot of stick. It does, because people just can't be asked to train it. <laughs> Fair enough. Magic carp? Is that a, the fish guy, the orange fish? It is, yes. The extent of my Pokemon knowledge was from playing Pokemon Go for a few months last year. <laughs> hey, we didn't have Pokemon back in the 1920s. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, Levi, what got you interested in streaming to start with? All right, so this is uh, this is might be a bit of a long story. So, All right. strap yourself in. Um, I actually never knew about streaming or Twitch before when I was in the UK, but when I moved to Canada, obviously I didn't have my friends around because they were all in the UK. I didn't have many friends. I was just working and coming home and playing games, which I'm still doing now. Uh, <laughs> but um, then I found it was actually around the release of Pokemon Black and White 2 that I started watching Twitch and seeing like, oh sweet, I can see like early videos of it before it comes out, after it came out and then um, then I said I kind of want to do some Nuzlocks on my own and like show them I did my first stream and no one, no one turned up and then I found <laughs> out my mic wasn't even working the whole time so I was actually you, talking to myself. You and your microphones, man. Oh, I've had a long history <laughs> of microphones. I don't even go there. So what year was this that you started? It was about four years ago. Oh, I would wow. Say. So, yeah. And then um, and then I kind of like went off and on. Um, I met a few people doing it, which was nice. I actually met up some, with some people in the like, area because of Twitch, which was nice too. But the Twitch... Thing really, really didn't come into its own until I um, until Animal Crossing New Leaf came out for the um, 3DS, and that's uh, when I met the Justin Flynn. If you don't know who the Justin Flynn is, he became a very big deal in the Animal Crossing and Pokemon community after a time. But um, I first caught his streams when he first started, so I followed him the whole way, and that in turn got me into streaming pretty much, pretty all the time, whenever I could. Because as this community grew, I started knowing and making a lot of connections and sharing and knowing a lot of people. And they watched me after his stream, and it just grew from there. I became his mod, which also kind of helped. So we kind of like supported each other. And then he grew really, really big. And um, then he kind of fell off the face of the earth. About stop streaming. Yes, like, I mean, he had some health issues, so it was. Um, oh no! You know, it was kind of understandable, but it was kind of sad too because I I really enjoyed going to that community. Um, I, I still see some people from back from those old, old days when I stream now. But after he he um disappeared pretty much, I took it upon myself to try and stream a lot more, 
at that point I, I was living on my own, so it was quite quite easy to stream um back then. So I had a pretty pretty good schedule going. Um I did mainly Nuzlocks and I still had my laptop then. Okay, so I was pretty restricted to what to stream. So I started doing the Nuzlocks like quite regularly. Some Steam games that don't require much. You can run like on that. a laptop, right? Yeah, anything that doesn't just lag on, on the screen. And then from there it's just been just been streaming. And then I had to move I then I had to move back home. So um then streaming became a lot less regular because as you know, living with parents, they walk in, they disturb you, they don't like you playing games and all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I know that feeling. Four years, that's a that's a long time to be streaming. Um, what lessons would you say that you've learned along the way that you could pass on to people just starting out? Basically, when you start, you get used to the fact that you're probably not going to have anyone there um, for like the first few streams. Believe me, I know. I did it. It's um, it's kind of disheartening at first, but when you as soon as you see that first viewer, that feeling, you'll never... You'll never we're not going to see you're never going to experience that again. But it's a special moment when you get that first viewer coming in and he says, hey, how's it going? And you just start going, hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, welcome to the stream. Like, really enthusiastically. I couldn't, I love that feeling of just, like, greeting the people. Like, someone new that you've never known. And, um, yeah, just uh, keep keep going at it. Essentially, you will build up. It's not, you're never, not going to be doing it alone forever. And also, I recommend, maybe before starting, knowing a few people first. Um, watching a few streams before, getting to know some people of the game that you like, and then in turn, they'll probably help you out too. So That's good advice. Yeah, kind of get it like you did. Get into a community, get to know some people, and and uh, you know start sharing some interests with some folks before you actually start is really good advice. So you mentioned um, Pokemon and the Nuzlocke. Um, is there anything else, any other genres that you play? Maybe like when you play on Steam. Um, oh, there's um, there's quite a few actually. The um, I like playing exploration games like uh, like No Man's Sky and and other stuff like that. I've actually um, I kind of didn't give it a chance at first, but then I started playing it on my actual computer for No Man's Sky, and I loved it. I also like RPGs, but I kind of have a thing about not finishing things. Yeah, tell me about it, man. I'm the same way. So yeah, um, also except like for the game. No Man's Sky part, I, I can't stand that game. <laughs> Cherry oh. likes it though. Yes, I do like that game. We have differing it's opinions on this. Very conflicting. But, That's um, okay. You guys are allowed to be wrong every now and again. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I guess. But um, I also like. There's a lot of other games on the on the 3ds I can't stream. Like there's a good game I recommend on the 3ds, like Phoenix Wright. It's, oh, Phoenix um, Wright is awesome. Yeah, I played that. Yeah. So I like games like that too, with like over the top courtroom antics. We were watching uh, D and I were watching Chichen Law play some either beta or early access game like that. It was it reminded me of the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney games. But it was, I think uh, he might have been. Oh, I can't. I can't. I don't know his name because it's hard to say. It has a weird name that it's. I'm never going to remember it. I think it's Joe Grand Pia. That's something. It. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly why I can't remember it because I can't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd be saying... interested in that, but it's a bit too much money for me. What kind of game is it? It's like um, a mystery game where you have to figure out about murders that happened. It's like Phoenix Wright in the. It's like a court. You're like in a courtroom, makeshift courtroom. Yeah, you have they, to figure out. It reminded me of the Phoenix Wright because you're in the courtroom, but there's also like these mini games where your answers are on the these wheels that come flying in around your character. You have to like click on them or push your D pad or uh, I'm sorry. Uh, control stick in the direction in real time so it's got a little bit of an action reactionary twitch style game but it's mm -hmm. very very interesting in a, a mix of genres and usually i like to give a game that's a mix of genres uh, a more of a try yeah it's always interesting when you find a game that you don't know if you're gonna like and then it turns out to be your favorite genre ever some of my favorite games ever are um ones that i either uh, on my initial preview or looking at a video or watch them play, I'm like, God, this looks garbage. But then I loved it. <laughs> what comes to mind first then, Kung, with an, uh, an example of that? An example of a game that I didn't think I would like, um, the most recent one is Near Automata. Um, I, I bought that game 
I, I watched several reviews um, before it came out, and I've never played any in the series. But it just looked like a boring RPG, um, but it's got the right mix of action RPG, and the story is just epically weird if you've not seen it. I, I don't want to go into too many spoiler details, but it has more WTF moments in per hour than any game I've ever played, and in the best way. It gets weird, y'all. <laughs> I just heard of that game pretty much of podcasts. I listened to a load of them, and that's how I get to learn about these games. When you go and uh, do your streams, do you prefer to play like like the Nuzlocke, the solo stuff with people watching, or do you also like to play multiplayer? I like doing both a load. It's whatever, whenever the opportunity arises, though, I will pick multiplayer because I um I play I will stream for a lot longer, and if I'm playing with friends, because I lose track of time. Lose so track of time. Um, You're more engaged. I get it. Yeah, does lots of fun and all, but. After about three hours, you kind of get a little bit burnt on the on playing Pokemon. It happens with Pokemon. It's uh, it's like that, but yeah, so I, I have the same problem. But it's like three minutes. Yeah, so it's better to do like. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> well, you didn't even get past the tile screen, did you? <laughs> no, I bought Pokemon. Um, I want to say was what was the one that came out in oh five oh four. Diamond and Pearl, I'm pretty sure that's like the big dinosaur looking creatures on it, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you probably mean Diamond then. Yeah, I, that one. That's renowned for being the slowest game in the series. But it's okay, 4th Gen is the 5th Gen, so. And which one are those? Uh, that is actually Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, but Platinum oh. fixed all the speed issues. So if I ever go back and try to Pokemon game, get Platinum. Get Platinum. You were saying about the speed issues then. What was the problem? The Diamond and Pearl games, um, there's the speed issues. The text went way too slow, even on fast. The walking oh, was really okay. slow. It was just the whole game just ran. Like, if you compare it with another game like Ruby and Sapphire, Ruby and Sapphire steams along. It like just blows. You can, get, you can get through that game really fast, but Diamond and Pearl, it's really noticeable. They kind of fixed that in Platinum, though. So. Was there a reason why they changed the pacing? Um, I have a feeling it's because they changed to the DS. That was the first oh, okay. game on the DS, and the other game was on GBA, so they didn't really know the DS that then, back then, so it was kind of really a test, I'd say. Okay, Levi, can you describe your ideal stream for us, either as a streamer or as a viewer? It's your choice. Um, as a viewer, I'd say. I've, um, I like variety of streamers, so um, I like seeing something different every time. Of course, you already know, and he's already been here, B Shiv. He's a variety streamer. Yeah, he was our first episode. Shout out to Mr. B Shiv. Yeah, Thank shout you. out to him. Make sure you check him out. Um, he's uh, he's a variety streamer. He does a lot of games that I like too, which kind of helped. I actually started watching him when he did um, Animal Crossing. So, and I was looking for people that was doing Animal Crossing. So, it was a it was a definite a definite watch for me. And then we found out we had a lot in common. Speaking of you know, gaming in general. Do you have any diamond in the rough recommendations for either big games that maybe people missed or indie games that are little known on Steam? Um, yes, I do have actually have a few diamond in the rough games on Steam. And the first one I'll describe is um, Astroneer. Yeah, that's class. It's it's class. It's um, a lot, not 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 a lot of people kind of know about it really. Have seen you stream that before? Yeah, I did stream it. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. Um. But I think when I play, I don't know if it still is in early access at the it moment. It still is. But it is. Uh, yeah. I think I got to like the end of it where it kind of like stopped developing. I don't know if they've added any more, but I haven't been back to play it yet. It's um, that's kind of an issue right now with it. Um, it's not really being updated that regularly. A lot of people are kind of mad. Maybe it's just but, um, it's huge with British streamers. <laughs> no, because the way I found out about Astroneer was actually from. Um, a group of uh, YouTubers that I subscribe to, they played it and it looked like a really interesting game. That's how I found about it. That's where you have the little astronaut suit on, you're running around hopping, you got a hose and little lights and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Wow, that's so, cool. Yeah, that looks that looks better than No Man's Sky to me. That's what it was quite claiming to be. And I actually really enjoyed it. When it first came out and then I tried it, me and Shiv played it together. Oh, we okay. had so much fun. Like the bug, there's so many bugs, but that was like... Another thing I really like about games, if there's if they just come out and there's a lot of bugs, I kind of love it because I love breaking games. I fell through the uh, map quite a few times in that game. Oh, I made the moon crash into the planet. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> now, see, some people call that a feature, like Majora's Mask. Oh, yeah. 
but some people claim that they uh, they did it themselves, and I claim I did. And Shiv is there as my witness. He was nice. just laughing away. <laughs> I made his vehicles go into the sky. He couldn't use them again. They fell into the ground. It was hilarious. We're getting killed by like block, like when the sandstorms come and you're trying yeah. to get away. I just throw Shiv in front of the sandstorm, and he dies. <laughs> God. Like, there were so many funny moments in that game. That's what I love about those sort of games. It's, it's something new. It's like it might the game might not be that big, but it, it feels like it is when you like experience another bug or like something like that. Especially PUBG, when you have some weird like bike going on top of a roof. Yeah, or you're just driving along and you you don't hit anything, and then you just flip mid air. And then suddenly your bike does disappear yet, and you go flying out the seat. Exactly. And you, you survive or, do, or you don't. Usually, I don't. Yeah. So are there any other games, though, that you uh, w- want to recommend other than uh, Astroneer? Um, yes. There's also another game that was quite relevant back in back in last year. It's called Death Road to Canada. I think I've seen you and Bishop stream that. Yeah. A lot of these games I've, um, I find like that turn out to be... They just turn out to be little gems that you end up playing and playing and playing and just want to be better. And then you see on the, st- see on the stream that they're also playing and you just want to like, race alongside them as they're playing it. So really for those that don't know what that game is, can you describe it a little bit? Okay, so Death Road to Canada, it's like, have you ever played the, um, oh, what is it? Oregon the, Trail. The, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Oregon Trail. It's just like that. It's, it's, it's really heavily fleshed out. Basically, you have, um, you start, you can make your own people. You start with two people or one and you're in a car and you're trying to get from one side of um, the US to Canada. And um, basically, like random events happen during the thing. Your your car can burst. You can burst a tire. You can lose all your supplies. A bee can go into your car and kill one of your members somehow. <laughs> wow! You can, um, you, can, you can find Garfield, and he then and a random event will happen where Garfield says, "I hate Mondays," and the whole screen suddenly bursts into an apocalyptic <laughs> nightmare. What? And you have to survive for like an hour. While, Gar- while Garfield's constantly saying, I hate Mondays, I hate Mondays. You have to survive for like an hour while constant swarms of zombies come at you. But it's a really funny game. A lot, Quite a lot of you streamers have actually done it. That's multiplayer as well? Um, it's um, it's local multiplayer. They're trying to get online multiplayer in it, but it's kind of a, sl- a slow process. Are there any games this last year and this year that you've played that you think are the best? I'm going to be a bit, um, going to be a bit obvious here. I think Grunky can agree with me. I think PUBG is probably my favorite game of the year, of this year, for You're sure. Right answer. Because um, yeah, I've never played a battle royale game beforehand. When I first got onto it, I actually started watching pe- people do it, and I was like, oh, I don't know. And I was watching more and more, and I was like, yeah, I'll give it a go. Played the first game, and I was like, I'm hooked. This is the sort of game I love. Um, yeah, I, I'm with you, man. I I would have to call it my game of the year. Uh, this year even though i reluctantly do so because like you it was my first battle royale game but when all those other games came out uh the zombie what daisy and all those other ones i looked at it like that isn't fun and when i first saw PUBG, i'm like this looks like a broken mess and there's lots of bugs and you know it's got to get boring there's never any action you know and boy was i wrong (laughs) never any action hey what what would you say is your number two game of the last year year and a half um, I'm going to say from based on the previous streaming experiences, XCOM 2. Oh yeah, that's a great game. Oh, one of my, one of my favorite genres now, those tactics, those tactics games, um, which is why I'm also looking forward to Mario and Mario and Rabbids coming out later this, uh, well, actually the week from now. Yeah. It comes out like Friday, I think. Yeah. So, um, and I don't know. Do you think they're going to be able to keep that game as deep? Um, as I'm scared. I'm scared. And yeah. what I've been hearing, I have not heard good things. I don't know. What have I you don't heard? Really, that's what I've heard. It's like, it's kind of like it, but it has a lot less. Like, it's kind of simplistic. And I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I want I mean, that, to get it. That makes sense to me if it's going to be, uh, you know, it's made by what, Ubisoft and they're they're going to aim for a, middle of the road so between you know kids and XCOM players there's, there's a wide swath of players mm. they're probably going after because XCOM is a great game but it's yeah. not one that you unless you're a seasoned gamer you can just jump right in and get yeah i mean i played a hell of a, a hell of a lot of games and i got XCOM too and i was a little bit overwhelmed to start oh yeah it's uh it's very tough it's not very it's definitely not forgiving you can be doing great at some point and then suddenly a mission comes and you just get destroyed 
and Absolutely. Ireland, just crying because everyone's in in the uh, in the hospital saying recovery thirty days, and everyone else is like really bad. It was like ugh. But I also love the um, XCOM. It's like it kind of reminds me of a Nuzlocke because I do Iron Man mode all the time. Yeah, super challenge mode or whatever. Yeah, so like, it's like I'm playing a Nuzlocke but with human characters in a war. So. My favorite uh, frustrating moment of of an XCOM game is when your guy runs up, puts a shotgun in an alien's face, and misses. Ninety nine percent. Don't worry, I got this, guys. <laughs> I got this. This is the one out of a hundred shot where I missed him, even though my gun literally can't hit anything but his yeah. face from where I'm aiming. And he's just like, "Oh, I didn't get him this time." And it's like, "Yeah, why you didn't get him this time?" Well, guys, I'm going to disappoint you right now because I have never played an XCOM game. So, <gasps> for those that are like me, that are noobs, can you explain XCOM a little bit more? It's like a tactics game. It's um, you control four later, later more than that, four four guys. They drop down from the helicopter and you have a mission. You have to either get kill all the enemies on the map or you have to do certain objectives like you know, retrieve data or rescue a VIP. So basically it's like a it's like a grid game where you have to direct your characters. They can only go a limited amount of movement. So you can like move to a certain spot. You can go on overwatch, which means if anyone else move, if any enemy moves in your range, then you can just fight open fire. And also you can just shoot, you can use your sword. You can use a, a drone. It's it's basically like a war game. It, actually, Final Fantasy Tactics. If you ever played that, that's a like simplified version of that. So it's um, XCOM Two. It's yeah, there's like a loose story. Like basically. Fire Emblem. If you played that, or yeah, if, if you played like old school chess, it's a turn based uh, okay. game where you yeah. control four players per turn, and the, each player, uh, depending on their class, has different abilities, and you can leave them... What, what Overwatch mode is basically a defensive stance where uh, they can respond. If the enemy comes within an area around them, they'll automatically respond, or you can have them go attack. It's, it's a deep game that has... Um, you know, it has a, a tactics-based like board game mode, and then you have a resource management mode when you're back on your mothership or whatever they call it in XCOM 2. So it's very tactical then. Yes. Tactical and strategy and uh, like like not to the, quite to the levels of like the Civ Civilization games, but uh, the the resource management and the tactics of between rounds is pretty pretty intense as well and important. If you you can, the, my biggest problem with the XCOM series and it's 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 the right move for them to make, but it's just me personally I can't stand is that you can make a mistake now that you're not going to pay for for ten turns. Your game is already over and you you, you know it. But you got to play out those ten turns anyway. Oh, man. Yeah. The new Mario Rabbids game is that just like a? Is it almost like a watered down version of it? Um, I don't know too much about it. I haven't. I've tried not really looking at it at all, so, so I can be pleasantly surprised. There's a YouTube channel called Game Explain, and I watched them play it for about forty five minutes. And yeah, it's like a watered down version of it. it I don't think the resource management is as intense. Uh, turn to turn it's more focused on the action it's it's a little odd seeing mario run around with a gun though have you seen luigi snipe that is insane <laughs> yeah, that's awesome you're, you're selling me <laughs> yeah I, I i really like to get the game but i, I think i'm going to hold off and look at reviews because I, i've just Same. got so many games to play right now when is that released uh, actually we're recording 29th. this on the 27th so two more days by the time you hear this it's already out so okay. go get it everybody but also <laughs> Um, XCOM 2 expansion also comes out the same day. Very, very <laughs> oh, clever. Wow. Awesome. Very clever. So, speaking of the Nintendo Switch, um, have you you've purchased Splatoon 2 and played? I think you and I have played together, haven't we? Yes, I think so we played once. Yeah, we get together like all when one of us is streaming and, and just play the hell out of it. But what are your thoughts on uh, Splatoon 2 so far? Hey, it's the worst game of it now. Um, <laughs> it's um, it's interesting because I I never played Splatoon one, but yeah, I started playing it. I I enjoy it for what it is. It's um, it's definitely not my favorite game by by far. I would never, when I, I can't play it on my own pretty much because I just get bored because everyone else is better than me and I I can't really do do anything about it. But when I'm playing with my friends, aka like with other streams. Um, I love it. It's one of my f- it's one of my favorite games on the Switch because um, just playing with friends and playing with people you know and being able to like talk to them while you playing while you playing it is just awesome. There's no no feeling like it. It yeah. makes like the bad the bad games turn into good games. You're absolutely right there, and I think that kind of is why I like the Switch so much. I mean, it, 
I, I bought a Switch in when when it came out March, and I've played. I've had fun playing like I, redoing the old Street Fighter games. I, I, I love Street Fighter, and and there's an active community on there playing Street Fighter Two, um, mm-hmm. but because of channels like yours and B shivs and uh shy guy brigade i've played just an absolute ton of mario kart and splatoon and the online yeah. games and had a blast yeah we had like two days ago when she was streaming just splatoon and mario kart it's one of the funnest streams he's probably done because yeah, i love i was there. i loved i love mario kart um i always wanted to get mario kart but i didn't get it straight away just while we're on splatoon too has there been any more um any more updates or is there going to be any more updates soon uh, about that um yeah there's, there's, there's gonna be a bunch more updates and they're, they're doing some more updates right now but um i'm gonna describe one of my infuriating things about the game based on that when you um, load up the game you get the constant screen of going hey these are the stages hey we updated them hey look new modes every time you can't skip it yeah it takes like five minutes to get through the freaking screens seeing what updates have happened and what games have changed like uh no come on nintendo please one button is all you need now as much as that sucks and it really does i agree with you 100 percent. imagine you couldn't hit a to skip make their dialogue run faster because that's what splatoon one was like <laughs> oh <laughs> really yeah i love nintendo from from way back they were my first well my first real home console i had an atari but i didn't really get into it a whole lot um but i had an nes and it's like that's a magical time for me so i always will love nintendo but Man, their design decisions sometimes make you just scratch your head and go, what are you guys doing? Yep. Okay, Levi, so you mentioned before we started recording, you wanted to talk about Animal Crossing. And uh, yes. so here's your opportunity, mate. Get on, get on your soapbox and have a run. Okay. Roll up my sleeves here. Put my so what is Animal Crossing? Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, Animal Crossing, It's uh, I've had a long history of I first got the game when Animal Crossing was Wild World. It's basically, can I explain it? It's like a sim- life simulation game where you're in a village. You go into a village, you don't have any money. You get given a house, you're on your own now. That's how the old games were, like the first Animal Crossing. And basically you just have to earn bells by selling fish, selling insects, catch, getting fossils. Bells are them. money in that game, right? Bells, yes, getting your bells. Um, and also... You can talk to your villagers. They can give you stuff and give you jobs to do. It's a it's a very very big game. There's a lot of things you can do and make it. It's a day by day game too. So you are you um everything will be different the next day and it goes by real time. So you have to like kind of wait for some things to happen. And also um, I started with um Animal Crossing Wild World, which was on the on the on the normal DS. And I loved it. It was one of those games. I got a really funny story about it, actually. I, before, when I used to have a DS, my parents never knew I had a DS, and I always tried to hide it. <laughs> so um, there was a, day, a few days when I used to live in the, in the, in the, on a farm pretty much next to the woods. And I used to like take my DS. I used to borrow and I'm crossing Wild World because I didn't actually have it. I borrowed it from a friend, and I used to borrow it every weekend. I used to just take it into the woods, sit on a stump, and start playing Animal Crossing Wild World for like five hours. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> and I was like, because I didn't, because I, I didn't want my parents to know I was, I was doing it, because they, they still do hate me playing video games. So I used to play that in the forest. I used to have the best time. The atmosphere. I, I, I recommend you do that. It might sound stupid, but just go to a really quiet place outside, start playing some games. It's really relaxing, especially with Animal Crossing, because it's one of those games you can just pick up and uh, chill out. The music is so good. The music's always been good. That sounds pretty awesome. But enough about the positives. Let's um, yeah. Let's let's really rail on Animal Crossing first. Let's uh, really talk about how Nintendo have ruined this. Um, I mean, um, taking their time making making the games. I know. I have it on good authority that any day now the Wii U version of Animal Crossing is going to come out. You mean so the Switch? When did initially did this get released? Okay, so Animal Crossing. I'm going to get yelled at now because now I can't remember. I think it was 2002, the GameCube one. I cannot remember. And I'm probably getting... Shiv is probably listening right now and going, you idiot, it's not 2002, it's 2001. Or something like that. <laughs> April 14th, 2001. There you go. I'm sorry, Shiv. I guess I'm not the true fan. But um, <laughs> yes, so 2001, Animal Crossing came out GameCube. I heard many people regard it as the best game. And I kind of do too. As Shiv definitely agrees with me, it's one of the best. It's one of the most brutal games you'll play. 
Hey, don't worry about Shiv. We cut out all his fuck ups too. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> but anyway, that game is hard as hell because it just chucks you in and you have it doesn't give you much of an explanation. It chucks you in. All the villagers are rude to you. So you're pretty much treated like an outcast, which really should be happening. You're an an, you're a human living in an animal world. That's that's what should be what happening. They should be treating you like you're an alien. Which the new games don't. They treat you like they're one of them. Animal Crossing Wild World is basically just a deplorable version, but it cut out a lot of features. A lot of people give it slack because um, it's um, a, a, lo- a watered-down version of Animal Crossing, but it's on handheld, so that made it awesome. And back then, it was awesome. Right now, it's, a, it's trash. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. The graphics are so bad. That was uh, Animal Crossing Wild World. Oh, Wild oh, World. Yeah, that was for the DS. And then they made another one for, for the Wii U. Which no, not the Wii U. What we're talking about that was an actual game, uh, the Re, which was City called Folk? City, City Folk. Yeah, which is basically an updated version of Wild World. The fourth, basically the fourth game, and I'm crossing New Leaf. When it first came out, best game ever. This is this, this is the game that got me into streaming and got me into meeting everyone over here. So I have very high regard for the game. But lately, Nintendo have been kind of uh, let's say dropping the ball on um, the future of Animal Crossing. Um, especially, okay, let's start with um, this one game that came out for the Wii U. It was probably the worst game of the year. Okay, here we go. Um, prepare yourself. Okay, sit down in front of the screen. You're watching E3, watching Nintendo. You see the Animal Crossing characters going, yeah, yes, the new Animal Crossing for Wii U is coming out. And then you, and then you, then you see, and then you see a character running out of the town hall. He's like, yeah, yeah. And then you see the other characters, Tom Nook. He's like, okay, they're out on the map two review. That's kind of cool. Then you see the numbers on the ground, and then you see them taking a step, and then a die swallowing, and then your heart goes into your into your feet, and you're just like, you, you didn't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? You took your favorite characters from Animal Crossing and the shittiest part of Mario Party, yes. and mixed them together. <laughs> Uh-huh. And then you just show amiibos, and it's like, no, you have to have yeah. amiibos to play the uh, game. No. But if you want to play right. it the right way, you have to buy all the amiibos, and even then, it's still pretty bad. Yeah, I was so devastated. I was like, I was just staring at the screen, going, "They didn't just do this to us. This is this has got to be a prank." Like they they have, they, have, they have to like suddenly say at the end of the show, "Oh, by the way, the actual version of Animal Crossing is coming out." That never came. No, it never did. In fact, the I, I remember when I got the Wii U that came out in twenty fourteen, was it or twenty twelve? I think it was about then. So, uh, like, I don't know, six months or maybe even a year into the Wii U, they're like, you know, if you turn on the Wii U, there's like a bunch of me's running around on the care on the screen and the icons of popular games and the Miiverse, whatever. Well, mm-hmm. they, they came out with a a Miiverse um, loading screen like that, all about Animal Crossing with all these high res HD assets, and I'm like, oh, they're clearly working on an Animal Crossing game, right? <sighs> nope. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, for people who are listening that maybe haven't been to your stream, um, Levi is at twitch.tv slash Levi Hurst, L E V I H U R S T. It's the name of the episode, too. Uh, what would you say, Levi, to advertise your stream to get people to come check you out? Okay, basically, if you're looking for some good Nuzlocke action, if you're looking for some death and some Nuzlocke action, I'm 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 a pretty safe bet to because I usually stream Nuzlocke all the time now. If you want to catch a good Nuzlocke, just check me out. Also on the weekends, usually I get to go on the um on Steam and I get to go on my computer. If you like if you like games like PUBG and World to Drift and No Man's Sky, then um, usually I'll be streaming those when I can get the access to it. Yeah, those are pretty much the things I do. Well, uh, thank you, Levi, for joining us uh, today, and thank you guys for listening. No worries. Have a good one. Catch us here next Friday uh, for our, the next episode of our podcast. Please go to your favorite podcasting app, subscribe, rate, and give us a review. Even a small one-word review helps us on iTunes. Stay on high on the metrics there. Uh, share the podcast with a one or two of your friends, someone you think that might like streaming themselves or just to watch streaming, or even if they just like video games, that would be great. You can catch us at facebook.com slash podcast or on Twitter at GLY podcast. We'll see you next time.